Next, I want to remove the rocker cover, so I'm going to take the coil pack out first. Once those two bolts come out of the way, you can carefully lift this up. With the coil pack out of the way, we now have these um, Torx bolts here. Now along the back here, you have um, some plastic wiring in here. If you grab it on both sides and just lift up, it'll pop off. Because you're gonna need to access some bolts that are behind it. Once you've taken this off, you'll be able to see the ventilation pipe here. You do need to grab a little tool and just pull that clip up and out of the way. Then you can just pull that off the rocker cover. There's not a lot of room. Once the rocker cover comes free, it might be easier. That's popped up and out of the way. Now these bolts here are E10 Torx bit. Once they've all been undone, just got to watch this wiring as you lift it up. And we get the first glimpse of what's going on in here. So that's going to need a fair bit of cleaning. It's good to see that these haven't um, got any sort of rust on them. And despite the the foamy milkshake that's produced from the coolant and the oil, it's actually quite clean in here, so that's a good thing to see. Now I've got the um, crankshaft bolt here, and this is a big washer that sits on it. I want to put this back on the crank so that I can use this to turn the engine over, but with this big washer in the way, you can't actually, or can't easily see the little timing mark that's on it. So I'm just gonna pop just a spacer on there and wind that bolt in place. With that bolt in place, I can now easily wind the engine over with a spanner. Now we have a, we have one timing mark that's over here. And the other timing mark is this arrow here. So we're gonna wind the engine over till those two line up. So we've got those roughly lined up there, but what we also want to check, even though we've lined it up to the mark on the crank, we need to make sure that the cams are in the right position, just for disassembly and to make sure that it all lines up before we pull it all apart. So there's two slots in these cams. They're not right in the middle, they're actually offset. So what we want to do is have these slots in the upper half. So I'm going to need to rotate that engine another 180 degrees. And you can see here with the cam locking tool that there's no way that that can lock in at the moment because they're in the wrong spot. So we'll wind the engine over again. With it wound over another 180 degrees, you can see that these cams, the slot is now in the upper half. And this is the cam locking tool um, and you can see that this can be slipped into place. Now we don't want to use this at the moment um, but you can see that it can be fitted with the crank in its correct position and the back of those cams in their correct position. You should see on this one there's a small little bump and on this one there's a tiny little hole. Now they don't seem to line up exactly, it's almost as if this one's just like almost like half a tooth different from this one. They're not in a perfect straight line. They sort of sit just slightly ajar from each other. But the next step now is to undo these two cover screws. Now, this looks a bit hacked up already. Um, they're a very shallow Torx bit 
and it's really easy to um, strip them out. So go very careful. Usually you can do these without having to actually um, hold the cams in place, but um, this one just began to rotate. So a, I used about a 24 mil spanner. Now I've actually ground it down a little bit narrower. So with it ground down, I find that it can fit into this little space. Um, otherwise it doesn't fit. And it's not a perfect tight fit, uh, but it's enough to hold that cam in place. These shouldn't be as tight as what they are. And it looks like I'm not having much success. It looks like I've begun to chew that out, which is going to become a problem. So these have been fairly messed up and although I've got the right size bit, um, it's too chewed up to actually work. So we're going to have to be a little bit more brutal getting these off but it's not going to stop us. Now these are loosened up and we can just get these off. Um, often you'll get a lot of oil running out of these. So I might just zip it back on and get a rag ready. Now these are purely just covers. Um, this seal here seals this up here. Now there is some pressure in there, but they didn't need to be as tight as what they were. So I'm going to see if I can get some um, secondhand ones or I'll have to buy some new ones because I'm not putting it back on looking like that. Now the next thing is there's two bolts in here. It's the same Torx bit. Luckily these are better design bolts and we're not going to get a repeat of what we've just seen. So the bolts in here are going to be quite tight. I like to use a breaker bar. You just want to make sure that you're not rotating this cam significantly. Um, we want to keep it in much the same spot. That's why I like to still keep the belt on just till I loosen these. And you also do need to hold it with the spanner as well. That's the first one done. Now you can remove these two bolts. With a six mil hex bit, we can release the tension that's on the belt. Now normally there's a little spot here that you can see where we can then lock the tensioner back. I can't spot it on this one, so I'm going to figure that out later. But now we can just take this belt out of the way. And I want to get that oil off that we dripped on it because that's not going to be good for the belt. With the belt now gone, you can just pull these off. Do note that there's a like a plastic um, sleeve that fits in here. Sometimes it comes out with it, sometimes you gotta pull it out separately. See that time it came out with it. So while the oil's running out of these, I'm gonna take off 
the bolts that hold this plastic cover on. There's two here and there's one around the back side here and there's one just underneath my rag there. There's one hidden from view, just back here. And this last bolt here, with those four bolts off, you now need to take off the tensioner. So to remove this tensioner, there's a bolt in the middle. Um, with a number of aftermarket tensioners out there, um, they could be all different sizes. This is a T50 Torx bit. And your tensioner can come away. Now with those four bolts out and the tensioner out of the way, this plastic housing can come off. So now with that removed, it's quite easy to see where our cylinder head ends and the rest of the engine is beneath that.